How many believe there's power in the name of Jesus? Why don't we lift up that name this morning? Why don't we welcome into the house with a hand clap of praise? shall be saved. The Bible says that there's not another name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I come to tell you, there's power in the name of Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. I'm so thankful for what I feel here today. I'm so glad to see everybody here this morning. Thank you for coming out and worshiping with us today. Uh, to all of our guests, all of our home folk, thank you for being here. If you're a guest with us today, thank you. Let's give our guests a hand clap this morning. I'm excited about what the Lord has in store for us today, and I hope you are too. 
David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's no place that I would rather be. If you're a guest with us today and you did receive one of our Connect cards, please fill one of those out. There'll be a time later in the service for you to give us those. Um, we'll take those from you. So fill those out. We're glad to have you here. We're going to go straight into our prayer request this morning. I'm, uh, I'm thankful that God hears us when we cry unto him. And we're going to bring these needs before him. Got several needs up on the screen. You can look over those. Let me mention some here very quickly. Uh, remember Sister Markle. Uh, I believe she is uh, out of the hospital. Let's keep remembering her. Sister Gilmore. Glad to see Sister Gilmore here today. Sister Sellers. Sister Couples. Sister Mullins. Uh, Brother and Sister Haley. Marley Wilbanks. Brother Butch Parnell. Brother Tracy Newman. Uh, Daniel Threadgill, let's keep the Gann family in our prayers through this difficult time. Let's continue to remember Faith Hodum, Sister Christine Seller's mother, and also uh, Sister Charlotte Smith and her family. They're going through some difficult times, so let's pray for them today. If you've got a need this morning, it's an unspoken need, why don't you lift your hand to heaven right now and just believe God that it's going to get handled. He said if we'll believe without doubt, that it can be done. He said, ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Do you believe he can do the miraculous? Let's pray here today. If you want a healing in your body, come up this morning. We'll anoint you as the Bible says and pray the prayer of faith. Let's pray today. God, we love you this morning. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy to us. Thank you for waking us, God, for allowing us to come into your house once again. And God, we brought our needs before you knowing that you can work in our favor. God, you're the great physician. You're the healer of all manner of sickness and disease. You're the prince of peace. You're the almighty God. You are wonderful and you're counselor. So God, I pray upon every need that you'd move with your miraculous hands, that you would do the impossible, God, because nothing is too hard for you this morning. God, we come to you this morning to praise and to worship you, Lord. I pray for your anointing to rest upon our worship and upon our musicians, that as we sing and play unto you today, that you'd hear us from heaven, and God, that you would move in our favor. God, we pray for the preached word of God today. I pray for the gifts of the Spirit to operate here this morning, that the gift of prophecy would rest upon our pastor as he speaks, thus saith the word of the Lord. Open our hearts today, God, that we may receive your word and leave here changed forevermore. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor, Father, because it's due unto your name. We thank you for what you're doing right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thankful for what I feel here today. We're about to enter into worship again. There was a preacher, a powerful preacher by the name of T.F. Tenney, and he was in a church service one day. I had read this. And a young man had showed up just after worship. And he came up to T.F. Tenney. He said, T.F. Tenney, he said, Brother Tenney, he said, I showed up just in time for the Word of God, the best part. And Brother T.F. Tenney said, it might be the best part of you. He said, but God ain't worried about the Word. He said, that's the best part for you, but the best part for God is worship service. Because that's when he's looking down from his throne, saying, despite our situations, despite our hardships, despite what we're going through, we're still going to praise him through the storm. And I want to know who here today believes that in spite of your storm, if you will praise God, he'll do the miraculous. Let's worship.
today. I thought about it as it was saying, Lord, you found me, you healed me, you called me from the grave. The story of Lazarus came to my mind. Jesus seemed like he was four days late. He was already stinking in the grave. And some of our lifestyles stink sometimes. And we feel dead in the Lord. But the Bible says that Jesus came and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he come forth, but he was still wrapped up with the wrapping that people had put it on. And what he told him, he said, loose him and let him go. And I come to tell somebody that if you let God, he'll kill your dead lifestyle. He'll raise you from the grave and he'll loose you and he'll let you go. 
God can do anything. And he's here today to do something for somebody. Aren't you thankful for what you feel here today? You can go ahead and be seated very quickly. I've got just a couple of announcements for us. And then we're going to get into the preach word of God. I, I don't know about you, but I need the word of God. The Bible says man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. Uh, remember our bread of life banquet for those who have uh, read their Bible through uh, this year. And I really believe this coming year we're going to have more people added on that list. Uh, but it's March 5th at 6.30. And if you are bringing a spouse, and which most of you already know if you are, it will be $15 there. And uh, we are having play practice today at 4 o'clock. Um, if you're supposed to be there, be there. We've got to get this play together. Um, I don't know how we do it, but the play always comes together, and it don't just come together because we, we show up a couple times, but it's people who work hard, and let me thank you for showing up to practice, so if you're supposed to be here at four today, be here, and we're going to uh, practice over the play. Uh, we're going to go into our tithes and offering this morning. Ushers, come forward. Aren't you thankful that we can give? I am thankful. Well, it don't sound like, aren't you thankful that we can give? Jesus was watching as they was giving their offering and he's seen the Pharisees and the rich men throwing all their money in and there was the lady who just had two mites. And he said, this woman has given way more than these other people because she gave what she had. So stand to your feet today. We're going to give unto the Lord as he's prospered us and I promise that he'll bless you for it. If you want to give online, you can do that today on our app, Tithely, or you can text GIVE to the phone number on the screen. Men of music, play us a music. what I have felt here today already and I don't believe that God's moved out just because we quit singing. I believe that he is the word. Amen. When the word goes forth, it's him. It's him every time. I want, the, I want him. I would like to uh, uh, quickly make the announcement uh, following up with what Brother Levi already said about the word of, uh, bread of life banquet. If you read the Bible through, that's this Thursday night. We need to know whether you're going to have steak or hamburger steak or chicken. If you haven't marked already on the uh, paper, please do so. We're going to try to get the meat done, taken care of the first part of the week, so we need to know. Uh, if, if you don't mark anything, we're just going to assume you want hamburgers. I'm just kidding. Please mark. Please mark so we'll know exactly what you want. Also, um, quickly let me uh, tell you to hold up the Gann family. Brother Benny has been a part of our church now for the last a uh, few years, great man. Uh, he was quiet. Uh, he was quiet all the years that we've known him. 
Uh, he's been much of a man. He was a, a veteran from the Korean War. Uh, he served our, our country. He also served our community. He was a policeman and a fireman until the, he retired. Uh, so he was a servant. Great man at heart. And God took him on home last night, uh, called him from this earth to his uh, forever destination. And it's, but their family is still hurting. And we want to hold them up. You, we, they're planning on making reser, uh, reservations. They're planning on making their uh, uh, funeral arrangements this evening at three. So by tonight, we should know those. But I hope that you'll be holding them up in prayer and keeping them uh, near and dear into your heart. And we're going to do whatever we can as a church. We, when one of us hurts, we all hurt, don't we? When one of us grieves, we all grieve. We're going to grieve together. We're going to help them through this time. Uh, in fact. I was just reminded, in fact, I guess it was Friday night as I was leaving the hospital. Uh, may, may have been after I'd already left the hospital and I was talking with uh, Brother Ben and Sister Arlene both afterwards and, and uh, one of them mentioned to me, said, well, I, I didn't know how much I needed a church family until now. And there's so much truth in that. I, I don't want to go through the struggles of life without one another. But thank God we have one another. Hold those that are uh, very near and dear to us, our other family members that are very low. We've got several that are very, very sick and very uh, much need of a touch from God. However, I'm going to preach to us today from a very familiar verse. In fact, probably every one of us could quote this. I'm going to read it. I hope that you'll read along with me. They'll put it on the screen for you. In fact, we could all read it together in unison today. For Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, but my God. Everybody say, my God. My God. Boy, that, that just sounds good, don't it? It ain't somebody else's God. I don't have to go through somebody else. It's my God. And then he says, shall supply. Can you say that? Shall part of my needs. No, I didn't say that, did it? It don't say nothing about part, does it? My God shall supply what? All. All my need. All your need according to his riches and glory. Heaven's not bankrupt today. Amen. Heaven's not bankrupt. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It's already mentioned, Brother Levi mentioned earlier about the power of of God, but when you look at that little phrase by Christ Jesus, do you know what? Jesus said it like this All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. <laughs> all power. Yeah. That's, I, I, I love, I love the, I, I, uh, of course, I love hydraulics. I've, I've studied hydraulics somewhat. I've not brushed up on it lately, but in fact, I was thinking this morning when I was getting, uh, Finished with, uh, right before church time, I thought, well, I wish I had time just to go over and, and read a little bit more on some hydraulics. Hydraulics are an amazing thing. And then they've got a power beyond. Some of you will be familiar with this if you have dealt with uh, hydraulics, but there's a, what they call a power beyond in hydraulics. And it's, it's just an amazing thing. It is the power of the hydraulics and then they go beyond that what would normally be the displacement of the pressure of that hydraulic fluid or oil and, and it would go beyond that. They'll put a power beyond valve in and, and then it, all of a sudden it just boosts that to a whole new level. And that's amazing to me. The ability to do um, electricity and my dad, he can tell you a whole lot about uh, coal uh, turbines and, and how that they work, steam uh, term, turbines, I should say. Uh, he can tell you about those things and how they, but how they can produce that even from uh, nuclear, uh, uh, breaking down the, the atom and busting it and making it electricity. Then, they are, then from water, we have the water turbines that we have very near to us here at Pickwick, even Wilson Dam. And by the fall of that water, the water is turning those turbines and it's producing. Thank God for power, right? Thank God for power. But when we look, there's some things that I need that electricity can't provide for me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. The combustion of gasoline, if you've ever studied the combustion of gasoline, it's amazing how that they 
can control that. Now, again, it's not amazing to see gasoline combust, but it's amazing that they can control that and put it in your vehicle <laughs> and then you drive down the road because of that combustion. Yeah. And it just, when you study that out and you look at it, you think, wow. I mean, you're driving around something that's potentially uh, deadly <laughs> if the combustion's not controlled. But there's so much, but there's some things that I need that gasoline can't provide. There's some things that I need that hydraulics can't do. I, I still stand in amazement at this little bitty hydraulic line that runs out on this big machine. We call them excavators. And I mean, it, it, they, they'll have buckets that will fill up a dump truck with one scoop. And it's controlled by oil. Yeah. It's amazing. We have machines, sawmills. We have big machines and in, in, in plants and factories that, that are operated by these hydraulics. And they, it, it's, it's mind-boggling to study and watch how this hydraulic can, under pressure, cause such force from it. But there's some things that I need that's more than hydraulics can provide. And so there is a force that all power in heaven and earth is given into. And so instead of me having to settle for something that I can only get from electricity, amen, instead of me having to settle for just something that I'm going to get from some hydraulic, even the power beyond, or something that I'm going to get from some gasoline, I am looking to the source of all power. I'm looking to the mightiest, greatest source there's ever been. And that is Christ Jesus. Amen. I, I know I'm, I'm so starting this morning on purpose. Because you know at the beginning of this year, we began this year and I give you my, our vision, our 2020 vision, and I believe it was from God. And I don't believe we've seen it all yet. But part of that vision was that we would see signs, wonders, miracles. Anybody believe that? Right. Amen. I believe that. Healings. Deliverances. Amen. I believe we're going to see the chains broke. The captive set free. Amen. Deliverance. Deliverance. I, I just this week, and, I, and I, I, I don't see him here today. I, I hope he'll show up before this day is over with. But I, I had a man sit in my office that one time had been filled with the Holy Ghost. And he's bound by the things of this world now. And he was asking me about getting him some help. And I was very frank. I don't know if I just feel an extra boldness that day. I don't know what it was because, man... You know, I, I, I ship people in every direction sending them to get help. But I looked at him, I said, what you need is an altar. <laughs> Amen. What you need is an altar. Because the same Holy Ghost that worked before in your life will work in your life now if you'll give him a chance. And programs are good. I'm not against programs, but I'm going to tell you, the power's in Christ Jesus. The power to set free is in Christ Jesus. The power to deliver is in Christ Jesus. The power to heal is in Christ Jesus. The power for miracles is in Christ Jesus. Amen. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was three weeks ago today. Three weeks ago today. We had special prayer. And uh, the week prior to that, uh, Christy had got a very bad report. And uh, had been told that her, she had cancer again. And we, nobody likes to hear that word. And especially when it comes around and most of the time when it comes back, it's very aggressive and very rapid. However, Christy, I'd like for you to stand today. This, my friend, is a miracle in 2020. She was told this week there is no cancer. There is no cancer. Can I say that the power of Christ Jesus can heal the sick? Amen. The power that's in Christ Jesus can set free. I, I'm, I 
know the devil will come against us and I know life is going to attack us and I know there's going to be problems that we will deal with and every one of us is going to die of something one day. But I've also come to, sh- to serve notice to the devil. We're not going to roll over and play dead, devil. When you come against us, we're coming back. We're resisting because we've got a God that has promised us that he'll take care of all of our need. Amen. I've read this verse this morning to us from Philippians on purpose for a launch pad because I want us to understand something. We can understand what God can do when he's doing it. But sometimes when we're in the heat of the moment or the battle, so to speak, it is easy for us to get discouraged, afraid, amen, fearful, wondering if God's going to take care of it or not. Amen. We look, and I I quickly go to a very familiar scripture, but we look at the scripture of of, of the story. Let me just go to the story. I won't read nothing there, but the story of the children of Israel. God delivered them with a mighty hand. The death angel come and visited every house that had not followed the instructions of putting the blood on the doorpost and eating of the lamb. Death angel showed up. So there was no question whether God was on their side or not. He proved that to them. But just a little bit into their journey, they began to think, well, God just brought us out here to kill us. Right? They come up to a Red Sea. And the Red Sea had never been crossed so they didn't dream about crossing the Red Sea. I'm not saying they've been crossed on the boat. I don't have a clue about that. But it never been crossed dry shod. They didn't dream that they were going to cross it dry shod. All they could look at was their current circumstances. And a lot of time their current circumstances clouds the miraculous of yesterday. Amen. I'm going to talk to us today. There is some of us that are sitting here that are only here because of the miraculous touch of God in our lives. First place, none of us deserve to be here. Second place, there's been many times in our life that what was going on should have took us out. But because of the provision and the miraculous touch of God, we were sustained and we survived whatever the storm that we were in. Amen. We're here because of his power. But then so many times we get caught up in our current circumstances. The problem that is going around us at this moment. The Red Sea that we're facing right now. And we forget that a death angel just skipped our house. Come on. We forget that the mercy of God just delivered us from bondage. We forget that the God that brought us out of our horrible lifestyle is still right here with us. But I've come this morning to tell somebody that God's provision is good enough to take you through whatever battle you're going through, whatever storm that you're facing, whatever trial that you're dealing with. Our God can make a way because he shall supply all. I I look at them and I think, you bunch of crazy people. You just escaped the wailing and the bitter cries of your firstborn dying. And now you're murmuring and thinking you're going to die. But then when I look at my own situation, (laughs) I look back 
and I see where God has miraculously done this in my life. I see where God miraculously saved me from this. I, I see where God miraculously delivered me out of this pit. I see where God has already reached down his hand and plucked me out of the sinful mire of this world. I see where God spared my life in a car accident that should have killed me. I see where God gave me a child where it looked like there was no way for me to have a child. I see where God God, he, he set my feet upon a rock and he put his anointing on my life and so many times I forget. I've come for this morning to remind somebody, you need to remember that the God that brought you to this point is the God that's going to carry you farther. The God that's healed you in the past is the God that will heal you today. The God that's delivered the person next to you is the God that will deliver your son. You really need to realize that God is able to supply all your need. They come to the Red Sea and it looked impassable. I ain't going to deny that. I don't know why God chose to part the waters. He could have just as easily picked them up and dropped them on the other side in an airplane. And they didn't even have airplanes then. He could have. He could have given them all parachutes that come off the back of their shirts. Could you, and listen, if you read over in Deuteronomy, it says their shoes never wore out. Their clothes never got old. Their feet never swole. Amen. So if God can do all that, he can do anything, right? But yet he chose to open up the waters and then he chose to close the waters upon their enemy. That's God. Because he was taking care of their need and getting across and he was also taking care of their need to not have to deal with these crazy Egyptians that thought they could chase them down again. Amen. You won't figure God out, but you need to trust that he can take care of whatever you're standing in need of. I preached a few weeks ago, and I, I don't want to reiterate. I don't want to sound like a, a, a broken record and go around through the same thing again. But somehow or another, we've got to get it through our head that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Our doubts is God's limits. Our fears is the limits to God. He knows no limits. Amen. We find in just, a, I mean, here, here are the children of Israel. I don't want to stay on them. Man, I've done stayed on them longer than I wanted to, but I'm going to, I'm going to jump in just a minute. We find where the children of Israel, here they are. They're sitting there and they, they, they run into fear and doubt at the Red Sea. And all of a sudden, God makes a way. Which is a little ways down the road. Not, not after a few pairs of shoes, because their shoes didn't wear out. But just a little ways down the road, they begin to think, well, we're going to starve to death because of water. God says, well, that ain't nothing. I can put a rock and follow you around and give you water every day. Now, I hadn't seen a rock follow me around, but he put a rock to follow them around that give out enough water for the whole group to drink every day. Amen. He didn't, he didn't let a half of them die of starvation. He didn't let some of them's tongue get real thick. Why? Because his provisions are always enough. Amen. Then they were like, we're going to die of starvation. We ain't got no way of getting food. God says, well, that ain't nothing. Opens up the heavens, pours out manna. Every morning they get manna. And on Saturday, they get twice as much. I mean, who but God? And you're wondering if God can take care of your issue? Amen. They get tired of mine. I said, well, we sure would like to have some meat. And I said, well, okay, I can handle that. Send in a bunch of quail. I got this covered. Just trust me. I'm quickly jumping. Let me jump over to John chapter 5. I'm going way down. I'm going to John chapter 5. 
certain man was there and which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Jesus saw him lie. He saw, Jesus shows up. And he had been there a long time in this case. And he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? And the impotent man said, Sir, I have no man. All of a sudden he says, You know, I ain't got nobody. Jesus don't need nobody. He don't need your help. He don't need you figuring it out. Amen. And again, I don't, I, I'm not, please, I'm not trying to embarrass you, Christy, but Jesus didn't need to do surgery on you, did he? He can heal cancer without surgery. Amen. I, and again, I'm going to be brief. I ain't got time to go into details this morning, but it's been several years ago. But Jesus put gas in my gas tank and I didn't need a gas pump. Now, you, that sounds far-fetched, but it ain't far-fetched when it happens to you, and it happened to me. It happened to me. What I'm trying to get across is that if you've got a need, if you've got an issue, we've got a promise, and he's got an answer. So whatever your need may be, God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. I'm backing up. I'm going to Matthew chapter 14. Jesus departed by ship into a desert place and when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Verse 14 of chapter 14. Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. Now, that would have been good enough, wouldn't it? it? Would anybody be satisfied if God just saved your soul and let you go to heaven? Right? Would you be satisfied if God just healed you and he didn't take care of nothing else but you didn't have no more sickness in your body? We, they could have left happy in Jesus. They had just been healed. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. Well, yeah, we can look around and tell usually what's going on. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy them victuals. We could say vittles. But send, send them away so that they can get them some food. Jesus said unto them, they don't need to go nowhere. Why would I send them away? They, ain't, they don't need them going nowhere. They need not depart. Just give them something to eat. But here's man. We have here but five loaves and two fishes. God's provision's enough. God knew already what you were dealing with before you walked into this place. God knew what your diagnosis was going to be before you entered the doctor's office. God knew your struggles before you ever put on your clothes this morning to come to church. Come on. There's some of you that think that you're hiding something from God. I'm not going to tell him how depressed I've been lately. God already knows. I'm not going to tell him how broke I am. I'm, not, I'm just going to keep all this to myself. I'm going to carry the weight of my struggles on my own. Well, you're selling yourself short because God's not short. You're shortchanging your own self. The Bible tells us, y'all ready for this? News clip, here you go. Casting all your cares. That means if your toe is hurting, God can take care of your toe. If you ain't got no money, God can put money in the bank account. If you're struggling with a disease, God can heal your disease. If you need salvation, God can fill you with his spirit. If you got a bondage in your life and a chain that can't seem to be broken, I'm telling you, just casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. That's what it says, right? So here they are. Well, I'll send them away to get some food. He says, they ain't got to go nowhere. We got this. Well, we ain't got the five loaves of two fish. Well, let's bless this. 
and they gathered up more than they started with. Twelve baskets full after all of them had eaten. Amen. There were, had eaten about 5,000 men besides women and children. I, again, simple math. But let's just say that 5,000 of those men, that's average that probably most of them was married and several of them had two kids. All right? We're looking at 20,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. What is it you're in need of today? What are you facing? Is it bigger than your God? Is it bigger than what you're dealing with? Is God not bigger than your issue? Amen. He provides enough every time. Every time. I quickly go to one of our go-to scriptures. And you probably heard this more than any other scripture. Maybe John 3, 16. But other than that, you've probably heard this more than anything else. But I just want to remind you again today. And it's Psalms 23. Anybody know Psalms 23? It says, the Lord is my shepherd. What? I shall not want. It don't say the Lord is my shepherd. He'll take care of me sometimes. The Lord is my shepherd. I've got some needs that he's not going to cover. He says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Don't matter if you're in a desert place or not. God's got green pastures for you. He leadeth me beside not storms of life, not stormy waters, not tempestuous winds, but by still waters. He brings peace to the troubled. Amen. He restoreth my soul. The devil has wrecked havoc in some of your lives long enough. He has made you forget how that he delivered you from the grip of hell itself. He clouds your thoughts with your current situation to the point that you cannot even remember the cries of your neighbors when the death angel went to their house and skipped church. He makes today looks so bad that you forgot what the taste of heavenly manna was all about. Come on. He makes you see the Red Sea so big that you cannot see him delivering you from slavery. Not only did he deliver you from the slavery, he let you spoil the land and you walked out of there healed, strengthened, and with goods that you didn't have to work for. Come on. You can only see the giants and you forget about the milk and honey and the promises of God. I want somebody here today. Shut tell you. I feel the Holy Ghost. I want somebody here today to get a grip that my God shall supply all my needs. All, all my need. Every need that I have. Every trial that I go through, he is my victory. Every battle that I fight, he is my champion. Every hill that I climb, he is the propeller to push me up it. Because my God shall supply every need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Would you stand with me?
he saw the man and said, would thou be made whole? He said, well, I have no man. He said, I don't need no man. Rise, take up your bed. When he said, we don't need to send the multitudes away. They said, well, we don't have but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, bring them to me. Bring it to me. I don't know what you came in here with today. But if you'll bring it to him, I promise you he'll make a miracle out of it. I don't care how troubled your life may seem right now. If you'll let him step in, he can make a way where there seems to be no Friend, he's beautiful for your situation today. Yours is unique as anybody else's. Your issues is just as different as anybody else's. But my God shall supply all your needs. If you've got something today, bring it to him. He's got an answer. He can take whatever you've got and he can make the miraculous out of it. Let God work on your behalf today. Before we leave here today, why don't you just let God change your situation? Let God show himself. Go ahead, let God step into your storm. Let God step into your situation. Oh, yes. My God shall supply all your needs. All your needs. Not one of them, not two of them. You haven't run out of goodwill. You haven't run out of his mercy yet. He's here to supply all your needs. Yes. Yeah.